All right. Today we're going to be making a classic apple strudel, good German baking. Um, we're going to start uh, with a tablecloth down on the paper. We have our strudel dough that was made yesterday and relaxed overnight. And then we have the rest of our ingredients scaled out and ready to go, including clarified butter and uh, some bench flour so we can really work that into our um, linen. Uh, we have our apple sitting aside and a pan ready to go as well, and the oven is preheated to 375. We're ready to go. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to take handfuls of that flour, we're going to toss it around, go ahead, uh, toss it around our linen to really get that flour worked in so it's non stick. Yeah, well. Yes, all of the above. There you go, sprinkle and toss. So the clumps really. won't matter. Clumps don't matter at this point. We can get clumps in there. We're gonna brush them in. So we take a bench brush and just work it back and forth, back and forth. So it really gets in so we don't have clumps of flour. All we have are nice little grains of flour worked into the fabric. Okay, I'll let you pick over on that. Brush it all the way around. You can work it in with your hands because you don't mind that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it. Good. So you want to be able to see the flower, but not so much that we can't see the fabric. And you want to be able to see the fabric, but not so much that there isn't any flower. Right? So I can put my hand down. A light coating of flour comes up with it, and that's about it. That's all I'm looking for. Good. You like it? Okay. So now I'm going to take my dough, nice and relaxed, relaxing. Dusting flour, dusting flour, please. And I'm just going to give it a quick start with my rolling pin. One of the tenets of shaping doughs is to start with the shape you want to end up with. My shape here at the edge is going to be a giant rectangle. So I want to start by rolling out a giant rectangle, matching the shape that I'm going for. A little bit more side to side here. Good. Well, you can see that I haven't uh, rolled that out all that much. Now we're each going to take a corner with our hands and we're going to start pulling very gently. Very gently. It's like a giant game of Ouija. You guys are too young for that. <laughs> Alright, slow. We don't want to lift it up too high, we want to keep it down near the table. We're working towards that rectangle that we want to end up on. Now, at this point, I can get to a place where I can put my hands underneath, lift up, up, and away. Mostly lifting away. There's a tendency with students to want to lift very high with all of this. You get it way up off the table. And it's just not necessary, so we just keep putting our hands underneath. I want to make sure we're not working with the points of our fingers, no fingertips. Working with your hands as paddles or the back of your hand and rolling it. You can stretch out these little edges. There's a lot of dough hanging out there around the edge that we can stretch out a little more, just working around the edges. And I want to get to a point where I'm starting to see the white of the linen through the dough. When you get to a point where it gets really thin in here, it's going to be very easy to poke a hole into it. If you poke a hole, don't worry. Just roll with it. Just roll with it. The hole will be covered by the next layer. <clears throat> so just keep stretching out your corner of the dough. You can see our hands coming through there without poking through. Very gently pulling back and away. And let it fall, and then it's going to retract a little bit. So then grab it again, stretch it out more. So 
okay? And then work your way around, starting from different spots around the inside, working outward. Try not to get it to fold over on itself. Good. All right, let's take stock of where we're at. All right, yeah, we can go more and more here. Yeah, you got a lot more around these edges. So just work your hands around. See how thin you can get it. See how thin that dough is. You can see their hands all the way through the dough. It looks like they're just about to poke through. So that's why we make sure we don't use our fingertips. See that hole right there? Not going to be the end of the world. It's going to get covered up. Good. We're really starting to sheet this out. All right. So we've got this nice big dough, big rectangle. Now we're going to take our clarified butter we are going to brush it all over. I'm just going to stretch it out, trying to get one last, last ditch effort to make it as big as possible. Excellent. Nice job, guys. All right, let's brush that uh, clarified butter everywhere. We want to leave an inch or two around the edges as a gap, but really we can take that, get as much butter on your, <clears throat> on your brush as you can. You can pour a little bit in and just brush it around. What the butter here is doing is it's lubricating between the layers so they don't stick together. And that way when it goes into the oven, any moisture that's in the dough is going to turn to steam and it's going to create pockets in between those lubricated layers of dough. And so we get that nice shatter effect instead of getting just one hard, tough piece of dough similar to the way that we laminate dough, croissants and Danish and puff pastry with layers of butter in between layers of dough. Here we're going to be rolling it up. It's almost like a deconstructed rustic lamination. Good. Make sure I like to walk around and check the light's reflection of my butter make sure there aren't any spots that are dull. They should all be shiny shiny at this point. Good. You guys go on that side? Cool. All right, now we're going to take our sugar, our cinnamon, and our breadcrumbs. I put the breadcrumbs down first, and you're going to go about the first third of the dough. We're going to be rolling, just to plan this out, we're going to be rolling this way. So all of our ingredients need to be in this top third. So go ahead and go down. You can use the thing to screen. Right? Uh, oh. Yeah, there you go. Are we doing all of these stuff? Yep. You go a little further than a third. Go to half. Good. We're filling about the first third to a half. All that sugar sprinkled out. Try to break up some of those clumps. And I'm sprinkling the sugar right in there with the cinnamon. Good. Don't worry too much about the sugar. It's really going to soak up a lot of those juices. Now we're going to take our apples, which have been macerating uh, in sugar and lemon juice uh, since this all started. You can grab a shin water real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the top, the ones that aren't sitting in their own juice, and we're just going to gently place them around. So here's my apples and the 
sugar, and the sugar drew out a lot of their juice, so they won't leak as much when they go into the oven. And then the lemon juice acidulates it, and so those apples start to soften up a little bit so we don't have to cook them before they go into the oven. Placement. Good. Great, that looks excellent. Let's pat that narrow a little bit so they're a little bit evenly dispersed. <laughs> All right, from here, we can add assorted dried fruit and nuts. Those are also going to help to sop up any liquid that comes out. So, our students today have chosen dried cranberries and some toasted pistachios. So, we're just going to give those an eyeball amount, whatever looks good to you. What was that, about half a cup like that? And then some pistachios. You could trade this out for anything. We can do almonds, we could do walnuts, we could do hazelnuts, we could do dried dates instead. We could do raisins if you're into that. Could you do no nuts if you're not working? You could do no nuts. Some people go nuts for no nuts. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold over just that first little bit of the dough. So it makes it over. You might see some apples trying to poke through at this point. Get it as far over there, stretch it. So we're back into a straight line here. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up that last bit of the nap or the linen right before the strudel, lift the whole thing and roll it over. Okay, tucking to make sure everything looks hunky dory. And then I'm just going to keep doing that, grabbing pieces right behind where this main strudel is, and then picking up and rolling it. Alright, so I'm going to have you guys take over on that. Communicate. Let's be some sign language. Yeah. Okay. Stop. Oh. Okay, keep going. Ready? One, two, go. Nice. All right, now back here, at some point we want to just make sure we tuck in those ends. So, tuck in just a little bit there. Side all the way down, like I did it. Like that. Just make sure that we're tucking them onto that. Good. Okay. One, two, three, go. All right, now pull that, pull this all together. So we organize. Yep, just roll it back under there. Wait, hold on, I gotta tuck my side up. Good. Now we know that seam is under there right now, so what we're going to do is we're going to push this back. We're going to roll it on to its top. So that seam is sitting right there. Judge how far I need to go. Okay, so I can go corner to corner and then I'm going to turn it. Why don't you get right there and help me lift it? You're in that corner. There you go. But we have to roll, so stop a little bit of that side. There we go. Now I'm going to pick it up and roll it so it lands on its seam. A little tuck, 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 tuck. Now if you need to, you can curve these. Sometimes you end up with huge strudels. So if we make an S-shaped curdle or a strudel, what did I say? Curdle. S, S for strudel. How wonderful is that? Make sure your seams at the end are pinched under. So I got this loose stuff hanging out. I'm gonna put that underneath to make sure everybody's happy. And now what I'm gonna do is have them brush it with the last of the clarified butter that we have. Let's go ahead and bring that clarified butter over. From there. Not so much that we have a pool on the uh, pan though. Uh -huh. And then this is going to go into a 375 degree oven 
for about 45 minutes-ish um, until you get a really nice uh, dark golden brown on the outside and you start to notice some juices running out here and there. <clears throat> Smaller ones will obviously take less time, but this is a really good size for um, a classroom full of people. You can usually get eight to 10 people in there helping uh, to stretch that dough out, all hands on deck. Or you can break this down into two different groups, make a nut-free filling, um, or try different uh, flavor combinations. You could use different fruits if you want. It's not just, it doesn't have to be just apple strudel. What other kind of fruits would go well? If apple works, what else would work? Pear. Pear, excellent. And then also, you could go outside of the fruit world and you could do a cheese filling. You could do uh, one batch using a cheese filling, one batch making an apple filling. You could combine the two, an apple and cheese filling. So the possibilities are endless. Uh, it's a great German recipe. Uh, super easy and really good uh, to do with kids. Oh, hi there. Well, our strudel's done. Here's what we're looking for. Golden brown and delicious. We're starting to get a little caramelization along the edges here where the sugars are weeping out. So I think that's a good time to call it. Let's just check the egg all the way around. <clears throat> We're gonna let this cool for just a minute. Welcome back. Uh, our strudel is ready to eat now. Uh, you can see this is huge. This is gonna serve uh, several people, which is great. Uh, so we've let it cool slightly, uh, but that shatter, the longer we sit, the less that shatter is gonna be there if we let uh, any of the steam soften that up and rehydrate um, our protein. So we wanna make sure uh, that we serve this warm, not cool. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a serrated knife and I'm gonna work my way along here, cutting across it at just a slight angle. So you can see a little back and forth. Let's see how we did inside there. Great, so we've got layered apples, one little layer of dough in there, and then you can see the nuts, the breadcrumbs, and the dried fruit soaking up any of the juices. So I'm quite pleased with that. So I'll just work my way along here. I'm gonna cut enough for my students today. Oops. You can see all that shatter that's happening from our thinned out strudel dough. Right there. A little bit of powdered sugar on top of these cut pieces. Shanty. I'm gonna take one of those pieces. Put it onto my plate. Some that shatter there with it. And then a little bit of shanty. like that. And there is our apple strudel.